I'm Ralph Cremens, Sierra Repertory Theater Education Director and Ensemble Member in Sierra Rep's breathtaking production of Les Miserables. Based on Victor Hugo's classic novel, this epic musical is the grand opening production of SRT's 35th anniversary season. I'll be your guide on this special behind-the-scenes tour, giving you an insider look on how Sierra Rep builds a show from page to stage. Let's begin by meeting Sierra Rep co-founder and managing director, Sarah Jones. And uh, I love theater more than just about anything. I'm incredibly excited that we're doing Les Mis to open our 35th anniversary season. Uh, it's a tremendously challenging piece uh, from getting the rights, which we've been waiting for for probably 15 years or so, uh, to producing it, casting it, uh, getting all the elements of production and design and so forth together. We've been working on this for more than a year now to get this in place for our patrons. So I hope you'll come join us and uh, enjoy our production of Les Mis. Founded in 1980, Sierra Rep has since presented 280 full-scale productions with a total of 7,764 performances and sold 1,129,471 tickets. excited to be kicking off our 35th anniversary season with Les Miserables. It starts here at the East Sonora Theater on Saturday, March 1st with our gala. Our gala has been sold out since late fall and we are very excited as the box office team. We are not sold out for every performance yet, but we do encourage you to book your tickets as early as possible. The international hit musical Les Miserables comes to our intimate 200-seat East Sonora Theater now through May 4th. But pre-production planning and creating began seven months ago when Sierra Rep announced its 35th season back in September. With the 32-member cast arriving just four weeks before opening, company manager Lisette Sweetland has arranged transportation and contracts for actors coming from all over the country. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and even right here in Sonora, California. The talented ensemble brings Broadway to the foothills. Musical director Sean Paxton has the daunting task of teaching the massive score over two and a half hours of complicated music to a large cast of 32 actors. Here he is in a quiet moment having a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with actor Scott Sawinski who plays Angeros. I want to be more martial, okay. more uh, militaristic with it and so really specific with the way that you're uh, singing these triplet, uh, these uh, eight rhythms. So, when the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. Miserable may not be a dance show, but there are several large numbers involving choreographed movement. Here's choreographer Marcus S. Daniel to tell us a bit about that process. Hi, my name is Marcus S. Daniel. I'm the production choreographer for Les Miserables here at Sierra Repertory Theater in Sonora, California. I am also part of the ensemble as a Bama de Bois and the dance captain. And uh, we're in our third week of rehearsal right now, and almost all of the numbers are completely set and done. We have three different rehearsal spaces, um, one where we can do music, one where we can do dance, and then our stage. As far as building the choreography, it's not a super dance-heavy show, but all of the choreography has to mean something. You know, when they're marching, they're marching to freedom, they're marching for pride, they're marching for the future of their lives. Same thing when we go to the lovely ladies. All the girls have all these different afflictions because they're, you know, they're playing prostitutes or they're on the docks or they're here for specific reasons. And so you really have to infuse all of that passion and that energy and that um, that physical life and what they're feeling inside into the dance. The danger. Does that make sense? Now we need to know what's wrong with you. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You, 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 you. Yeah. Cool. And, and, and a lot of times it's apparent, but it has to be apparent. 
the entire time. If you're going to have the herpes up, you have the herpes up the entire time. If you know that you've got, you know, whatever is wrong with you here, it's going to affect the way you move. So she can be sexy, but she can have, like, a total rash going down her leg, yeah? And the audience doesn't need to know it, but you need to know it, yeah? If I distract you at the bottom of the heap, join your sister, make money in your sleep. Come on, dearie, let me have a lot. That's right, dearie, show me what you've got. Dennis is a super, super passionate director, and it's almost infectious. You can't help but want to, you know, to do your best work and, and to meet him 100% because he's there completely 100%, 110% of the time, and he's always working on the show, and he's always, you know, thinking about what we can do to make it better or take the show to the next step. And as a choreographer, it's been a joy to be able to, to match that because you don't, you know, always find someone who's, who's in it 100% with you. So it's really exciting to get to work with somebody who's so dedicated. And as for our process, he really has been great with me. He told me, this is where I want them to stand. This is the reason why we're building this number this way. What can you do to, you know, help me elicit these emotions out of, out of the characters and so we can help the audience feel this way and it's been it's been a really collaborative process and it's been challenging because it's very emotional so you have to pull you know these really intense emotions out of your performers but once it's all said and done it looks really good and, and the other day we were practicing uh, do you hear the people sing where they're doing this huge march down towards the front of the stage and I just had gooseys all over my body because it's just really really um, wonderful to watch so as rehearsals on stage and in our rehearsal hall progress, the scene shop is hard at work, bringing the streets of Paris, France to life. Director Dennis Jones has designed a multifaceted set that includes moving pieces, the famed barricades, and projected backgrounds. Jones meets with stage manager Doug Brennan on a regular basis to discuss all the technical aspects of the production. The beggars have to be in place, the ones that are crawling under the curtain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have, what happens here is the white curtains close, simul uh, W1 and W2 close, B1 and B2 open. This is at the end of the solo. Yeah. Okay. But you got, we got to get, we got to get the white closed close before we can open, because right. there's a slide that Jeez. happens. The production uses over 100 lights and involves hundreds of complicated light and sound cues. Hi, I'm Doug Brennan. I'm stage manager for a production of Les Miserables. And I've been asked to explain the dots. This was a system that I was actually brought back from college by a young lady, Joanna Hobbs, who started working for us when she was in high school, went off to college and came back with this system and also did a lot of lighting designs and stage managing for us. What it is, when you're setting cues for shows, you get a lot of changes throughout the week. And rather than erasing things, we realized that if you had dots, you could pull them off and move them. And then we, it's also additionally color-coded so that for this show, green dots mean slides. We have slides from two projectors, front and rear. Uh, the orange and yellow dots are lighting cues. And the pink dots are warnings, things like calling curtain cues, calling fog, uh, calling any number of things that are being done backstage. So really it's just, it's a system that enables me to relatively quickly and clearly in not a lot of light see what it is that needs to be done at any given time. Um, we're in the uh, second day, second afternoon of our tech rehearsals, which are when you install integrate the lights and sound and in this production's case the slides into some into the rhythm of the show uh, unlike many shows the rhythm of this show is dictated by the score and so we are now trying to set the lights integrate the slides to we're on like page three of a hundred page script and it goes uh, step by step. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a phase of the show 
in the very early parts when Valjean Jean is on his own and he's traveling through the countryside looking for some place where looking for either a job or some place to sleep, some shelter, and uh, it's, a, it's a more, uh, it's a dark more him being alone in the world. And so the lights in this section are particularly important because that'll be the only thing that may, is happening on stage is one actor and some lights as he tells his story. Uh, Chris and I have been working together for almost close to 20 years, almost, almost. and uh, we, because you, when you work with somebody for that many years, you have a kind of shorthand, and so he kind of knows, after seeing a run-through of the show and seeing me direct the show, what kind of approach I'm taking for this particular piece. And so we start from that very common ground, and we begin talking about what are we trying to accomplish with each of the steps? This is a series. I mean, in this case, the actor is just walking from the upstage site all the way down to a wooden cross that will fly in. And, and during the cost, uh, course of that one walk downstage, he's going to go through kind of three or four lighting cues. And we have a variety of lights around 150 or 200. And then we have to write probably around 300 cues for the show or more. How fast we want it to go down. Uh, uh, is there going to be one light at this point in the queue and one light in this point of the queue? Are we going to crossfade those two cues together? That all has to be programmed into the computer. One of the biggest challenges for running sound for this show is the amount of microphones. Every, everybody has a mic. So I've got. Uh, 15 mics here and I'm gonna have another 10 over here so I've got two different boards to work with um, that's one of the challenges there's 45 musical numbers but as far as cues within the show it's hard to say not that many compared to some some musicals that have a lot of uh, sound effects and that sort of stuff um, but you know it's just there's never gonna be a downtime for me it's, I'm gonna be on my toes through the entire thing, just trying to, I've got, you know, 24 channels, give or take some, uh, of microphones to juggle as far as, as well as keeping everybody balanced so that you're able to hear everybody above the tracks, which is, uh, this, this musical is, is fairly loud. There's a lot of orchestral music in it and, uh, and a lot of big singing, and um, it's a challenge. <laughs> While work continues on the stage, our full-time costumers, volunteers, and prop mistress work on the final pieces for a complete, authentic 19th century France. Well, this is a flag that was in the film production of Les Miserables. Uh, the art director for the film, Grant Armstrong, uh, spent some time in Murphy's, and so he loaned this to SRT to use as a, a piece of authenticity from the original production. Hi, my name is Vina Beaker and I'm the costume shop manager here at Sierra Repertory Theater. Here we have uh, some factory girl dresses. There's a scene where there's a bunch of girls in a factory and they're all pretty poor. Even though they have a job, they're just working class girls. So we're distressing their costumes. We're dyeing them, making them kind of all this sad beige color because uh, no one in the show is, is very happy uh, for most of it. So that's what's going on here. Everything kind of has to be dirty, distressed. You can see everything's going to be frayed out um, and sort of dyed into, a, you know, stained up colors. We do everything here in-house with original designs. Our guest designer for this show, his name is Ryan Muller, and he is from New York City. So we're going to go ahead and head inside the costume shop now to check in and see what Ryan's doing. My name is Ryan Moeller. I'm the costume designer for Les Miserables. Um, I was here last in 2012 doing Cinderella, and Scott Beats called me over the summer and asked if I would come back, so I was happy to return to Sierra Repertory Theater. Um, the show is unique to SRT because of the size of it. There are 32 cast members, which creates the challenges of where do all of these clothes come from. The story of the play spans approximately 30 years, so you have a large fashion time plate that you're looking at. And we have everyone from 
the poorest of the poor beggars in the streets to a beautiful, happy wedding that happens in the end with the upper class. So we sort of raise the gamut of everything. We range everything. The complexities of the show include just how many people there are. I believe my count is up to 118 characters right now that we're dealing with on 32 actors. So we have a lot of clothes in the show. I haven't dared to count them yet, unfortunately. We are very fortunate that we are actually going to build a lot of the clothes and have them in-house so they are specific to what my designs are. Um, I based a lot of the clothes in reality. I did a lot of research over the summer and the fall of looking at period fashion plates and historical pictures as well as looking at the novel and the various movie incarnations that there are and trying to find the nuances of what would help tell our story the best. Um, Cosette's wedding dress, for example, is based on an actual wedding dress from 1832 that we have almost exactly replicated. So I wanted there to be that sense of history about these people. Um, the color palette for the show ranges from really dark, dirty, gross browns, um, things that you would find in the woods, dirt, mud, mushroom, browns, things like that, uh, to the beautiful apples and vibrant pinks and things that we get eventually at the wedding. I want the audience to get that sense of doom and gloom and war and frustration and poverty and then suddenly there's this breath of fresh air when finally we get the beautiful bride in white and all of her guests at the wedding. We finally have some happiness and some joy, finally. So this is the final costume for Monsieur Thenardier, who is the uh, innkeeper of the piece. He's the villain, so to speak. Also a little bit of the comic relief. And in the end of the play, they have come into quite a deal of money from all of this. And they're lying and they're scheming and cheating people. And through all of it, I wanted them to get a sense, or to keep a sense of low-class people that are nouveau riche, that suddenly have this wealth that they've come into. So I designed his wedding outfit to look like they have a lot of money, but no taste to go with it. So it's the gaudiest combination of colors that we could come up with. Um, I started with the sketch and with the research and having the idea, and then I go through the stores, the fabric stores in New York, and I find colors that speak to me that would clash or would go together. So I swatched all of them and I came up with, this was going to be the jacket, this was going to be the lining, this the vest, the pants, and I went through it that way and laid them all out. His wife is of equal gaudiness, and I think together that they will make a nice pair against the beautiful, serene people, the actual people with wealth and class at the wedding. Only one week into rehearsals, a special photo shoot was arranged on stage while the set and costumes were still being built and the actors were still getting to know each other. Photographer Rich Miller focuses his camera for publicity shots that can be sent to newspapers and media to help promote the show. Four weeks of rehearsal fly by quickly and all the pieces are in place. The cast and crew prepare for a sold out opening gala and excitement's in the air. The hard work has paid off. We're now ready for you to join us for our exciting 35th anniversary season and the international smash hit Les Miserables. This striking production promises to be a musical event you will never forget. It was so good. It was marvelous. It was overwhelming. It touched your heart. It was, it was really lovely. I've never seen it before, and I would love to see it again. And if you miss this one here, you have missed something. <laughs> it was really lovely. Really yeah. oh, fantastic. It was yeah. awesome. 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 The costumes were awesome. The singers. Yeah. Everything. Detail. Everything. All the detail from uh, uh, the shoes to the hats to very moving. Stage production yeah. was amazing. Not Just enough adjectives to yeah. describe it all. <laughs> yes. That's it's really fantastic. Yeah. Bravo is the word. Yeah. It was awesome. Wonderful. 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 Awesome. The music singing was really wonderful. Was and actually, at the end, I was crying. Yes, she was. Yeah. First time seeing Les Mis of any sort, whether it was a movie or any other production. It was wonderful. The singing was flawless, and the costumes, and everybody was wonderful. It was powerful. That was amazing. It was really good. Really good. Yeah, it was the best play I've seen in a long time. It was exciting. 
very intense, very impressive. Yeah. Will be the yeah. best <laughs> yeah. ever. People that I'm don't know this, about this place are missing a lot. It's one of the best productions we've seen, and we've been uh, had uh, uh, the season tickets for years, and it's just been great. Highly recommend it. Yeah. This was exceptional. This one this was one exceptional. Was. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Definitely yeah. see it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Their voices were so strong, they just came across and gave you all that emotion that they yes. were giving to us. Yes. It was yeah. it was great. Yes. Probably the best one I've seen here. Yeah, that was great, and the lead singer was just uh, out of sight. It was marvelous. Yes, thank I'd you see so it again. much, Paul. Really Ralph Crummins, and uh, i got to get ready for the show. Thanks for joining us on our journey to Les Miserables. Order your tickets now, and I'll see you here through May 4th at Sierra Repertory Theater.